Namaste from India. Today we have Jennifer Solis with us, who has published in our anthology, Change is the Only Constant. She is from Temple, Texas in USA. She has given credits in the book amongst others for her generous contribution. I will read out the contributors. Kareen Anselin, C.J. Dallas, Heather Nelson, Ronald Haig, Irvin Johns, Sophie Say, Anna Remo, Kim Shu, Michelle Hanel, Sarah Librand, Melissa Conway, Linian Michelle, Braswell, even Jennifer Solis, Vanessa Waters, Kate Swisher, Jordan Cambridge, Todd, Todd Williams, Natalie Brewster, Gwen are the contributors and I really thank all of them for their generous contributions. This book even went for reprint and it has 51 poems from and poets from eight different countries, namely Australia, UK, USA, Japan, South Korea, Canada, Singapore and Switzerland. Naming some of the poems in their book uh, titled Instagram 612 to 2020 by Lawrence Bridges, I God by Jordan Cambridge, In the Age of Internet Activism by Melissa Conway, Sleeping with the Television On by Todd Williams, Alexa by Jay Khan. This, these are the sort of poems we have in this book. And Apart from that, our uh, cover design is by Connie Darris in Germany, book design by Laura Antoniolo in England. Okay, so with that, I guess uh, we covered the technicals of the book and then we'd like to invite our guest for tonight, Jennifer Solis. Okay, we've invited her and we are just waiting for her to join in. Okay. Hello. I hope Hello. everyone is doing well today. Yes, um, Jennifer, we are great. You're live. Welcome. Okay, I um, I really love the book, and I am so thrilled to be it's in it. Um, to have it's you it's one of my poems. Um, yeah, I have it too. <laughs> but I am okay. not going to read it because I have it memorized. Just to tell a little about myself, and I have been through sexual abuse. I have been through all kinds of stuff, um, and the Lord has just saved saved my soul. Um, he's forgiven me for things I've done in the past, and now I write poetry for Him. I never knew I could write poetry before, but I am now. So um, we we are That's going beautiful. to read. Um, we are going yes, to read yes, Mark yes. of the Beast, yes, which yes. is one poem in this book. Are we ready to go? Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, and like yes. I said, I have it memorized, so I don't have to read from the book. Um, but let's go ahead and start. There is evil all around we cannot see. We have closed our eyes to what it really is to be. Wickedness, hate, and violence. It's flashed all over TV. It's in our movies, music, and in our books. They give you a line to keep in your head. They call it a hook. Now you sit in your little nook for hours, watching and wishing you had superpowers. You see mediums, warlocks, and witches casting spells with their wooden switches. God tells you no, you're playing with fire. 
Don't even let yourself have that desire. You may think it's cool next week. It may be a brand new rule. Take all you have to add to the pool. Your money, an app, in a moment, in a snap. Now raise up and, and spare not that rod. But people today will say that's too odd. So you just give your child a new telephone so he can see when he's coming home. But what really happens is very clear. He's always looking at that phone and the parents can't get anywhere near. He thinks it's a joy, like playing with a toy, helping to bring on the mark of the beast. The time will tell, we are on the brink. You carry around everything but the kitchen sink. Just like a serpent, Satan slivers right on by. You look around and don't even know why. You're protected and treasured like a new time ring. You have no idea the death that could bring. Happens sometimes when the network connectivity is a little poor. I've tried to add her back, but it's commendable. She has memorized her entire poem, which is, I can see her, it's three pages long. And that's really a big compliment to see her memorize such a big poem. Let me see if I can add her back. Oh, she's not here. Just give me, give me a moment, I'll add her back. Okay. I sent her a request. Now, hopefully she'll accept that. Oh. Here we go. I'm back. <laughs> we lost you for a minute. I am back. I yeah. Um, should I start over? You can. You can I start over. I there were some people that joined a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, absolutely fine if you'd like to start over. Okay, great, great. Um, and like I said, it is Mark of the Beast. So let's get started. There is evil all around we cannot see. We have closed our eyes to what it really is to be. Wickedness, hate, and violence. It's splashed all over TV. It's in our music and in our books. They give you a line to keep in your head. They call it a hook. Now you sit in your little nook for hours, watching and wishing you had superpowers. You see mediums, warlocks, and witches casting spells with their little wooden switches. God tells you no, you're playing with fire. Don't even let yourself have that desire. You may think it's cool next week. It may be a brand new rule. Take all you have to add to the pool. Your money, an app, in a more innocent. Now raise up your children and spare not that rod. But people today will say that's too odd. So just give your child a new telephone. So he can call you. But what really happens is very clear. He's always looking at that phone and the parents can't get anywhere near. The joy, like playing with the toy, helping to bring on the mark of the beast. Time will tell, we're on the brink. You carry around everything but the kitchen sink. You protect it and treasure it like a new diamond ring. You have no idea the death it could bring. Your life, your location, all your information. They'll know what you like, what you fright. You tell them everything, every single night. Evil will track you down right where you live. Your location is not something you should just give. Lead them right to your child, yes, you sure just did. Should you have coddled your child and kept him hid? Now, education is a must for the psychological thrust. A tool for the mind, a tool for the school. What choice do you have? in whom to trust. Not the devil, although he is smarter than most. He has a plan to deceive everyone from coast to coast. He's planning on having himself a soul's roast. The mark of the beast, the Antichrist rule, is that something you'll want to be a marked fool? You'll be marked right on your body where everyone can tell. Carry it around like a scarlet letter. From then on to forever, you will always be fettered. Unless you're 
or one of the ones to last and endure or face the punishment of a ruler who will rule till Christ comes back for the church to restore. Then you can enjoy heaven along with the pure. And this is uh, this is all very true. Um, that's the wind. You know, it's all been prophesied in the Bible. So we know that uh, it's going to happen sooner or later. Hopefully we will not be here at first. But that's up to God. as all up to God. So the pure change is the only constant. Okay. That's a pretty long poem and I truly enjoyed listening to you recite by memory. <laughs> As I was sharing with everybody over here oh, when you uh, went off line that it's commendable how you memorized the entire poem and were able to recite it. It's really worth an applaud. Now uh, well, actually, I have, I do have another book, um, and it's published on Amazon, and it is called God's Lost Sheep. Oh. Uh, trying to get you a picture of it. And this one I have written by myself. It has uh, 48 forms in it. But it also has the Bible verses to back up my form. And congratulations. And then I even have a little glossary. James. I'm sorry. I congratulate you for the, for you the book. Uh, what's called? God's Lost Sheep. Thank you. So, uh, yes. yes. To um, know from you about your journey, as you mentioned with uh, to us that Poetry really transformed your life uh, when you were uh, fully I, into abuse and yeah. drugs. The writing helped you get over the trauma and the full. Uh, oh, the whole I've been on drugs for so long and praying, praying to God every day that I would be able to get off of them. And it was a really, really hard time in my life. I actually um, tried to commit suicide a couple of times. Um, things just felt so bad and so overwhelming. But now I have so much joy in my life. And, you know, it took a lot of praying. It took a lot of getting down on my knees and asking God, to help me and so now he's given me the gift of poetry I never even I never knew I could write poetry and here I am now I'm I'm featured on Poets Choice which is amazing I'm so thrilled and now I have uh, another book God's Call Sheep and it does say Introdu introduction to God and the Bible through poetry and prose and it basically goes from the beginning of time, the current events, on to God's wrath. And uh, he has given me this gift, and, and I treasure it. It's very touching to hear a compliment from you. Such the power of that compliment is really touching, and it really goes very deep within us, and it encourages us to do more and more for poets. The power behind poetry, the way you put it, as it saved you from suicide and from getting you over drugs and abuse, is something to really, really think about. Like, once, uh, not too many people would look at the poetry having such potential, but I am amongst those who know that poetry has that kind of power to change and transfer your life and uh, what a wonderful book uh, you've chosen to publish into for expressing this thought oh, I, I, I'm losing you again I'm so sorry my, my internet 
Internet, I guess. I, I'm so sorry, but I, I can't hear a word you're saying and the video stopped. So I'm not even sure. Oh, there you are. Okay. Continue. I'm sorry. Continue. Uh, I was only saying that uh, how the power of poetry has influenced your life as it helped you get over abuse and drugs. If if it is not too hard on you, you I would we would like to hear more about it and how it what were you expressing in order to get over that trauma that you were into. You know how poetry influenced your life, how it helped you writing about God, maybe how it helped you get over your trauma. Yeah, um, I I grew up, you know, reading self-help books and and Christian books, but I had never read the Bible exactly from front to back. And on this journey that He's given me, um, that was one of the the things that really helped. It was to to get off of the drugs, you know. And now he's taken all the depression and all those worries and, you know, the things that are everyday things that we all have to worry about, you know. But when you give it to God, it is totally different. And now he just, he makes me happy every day. And I know that I'm doing something for him but he's doing even more for me. I would like to also add to that um, I have a charity called Humble Heart Kids, and it's for orphanages around the world. And a portion of um, the proceeds from God's lost sheep are going towards the charity. But there are so many children hurting around the world, and it is a Christian charity and um, I am just trying to help as many of the children as possible. Awesome. So that was another point I wanted to make. Thank you for letting me speak. It's really generous of you and we love to hear from people who are, have that big heart in them that they are able to do such uh, selfless deeds which we find is rare in today's day. And really honored to have someone who I can speak to about this and it's really a privilege. Now I'd like to know from you, how, how is Mark of a Beast coming true of our generation? You mentioned that, that Mark of a Beast, your poem that is published with us, is true of our generation, just as the Bible predicted. How is that? I, I lost you again. I'm oh, sorry, I can't hear you. You shared with us. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank everybody who has joined us over here. I can see Gandhi, Madhvi, Rogan Lightfoot, and a few others who have joined us. And okay, the big go ahead. Again, I'll mention you. the poem that you've published in our book, Change is the Only Constant, is uh, true to a generation, just as the Bible predicted. How is that? Very correct. Really? Well, um, you know, it says, it, it does say, you know, all the way through the Bible that there will be a wrath, there, there will be um, a devil, and he's going to take over um, the world. He is of the world that him and his angels uh, were sent here. And I do believe that, you know, we are in that generation. We're in that time where um, the devil, he's going to come and as the Antichrist, um, and he is going to make people not be able to buy or to sell um, anything 
uh, unless you have a mark on your hand or on your forehead. And um, the people that are God's people, uh, we will be taken away and, you know, we won't have to face that. I hope that rapture comes before they actually start to say that the vaccines are the mark of the beast, but they're not. And the vaccine, the vaccines, just like the flu vaccine, you know, um, vaccines for mumps and rubella that we got when we were kids, smallpox, you know, things like that. Um, but anyway, when the mark of the beast, when the antichrist comes, he will have you mark. He will have you beheaded if you do not um, accept accept him as God and have the mark on your hand or your forehead. So I am trying with my poetry and with that form in particular, I'm trying to warn people that don't already know uh, what's going to happen, you know, as far as what God's wrath really is and what the devil is doing in the world right now. That, yeah, I really, really want to get the word out about God and and about you know what his what his plans are for people for the future, so that they can also change their hardened hearts and become believers, know what's going to happen. So that's it. it. And all of it, I give all the credit to God. I never knew I could even write poetry, and it's for him, and I give him all credit and all the glory. So according to you, who is God? What is God? Who is God? Where is God? God is, God is, is spirit. Um, he is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is inside of us once we accept him he lives in us and he's the trinity i also have a um a poem that god gave me which is one of the very first poems that i wrote and it's called i am and it talks about the trinity and his different roles as god so there's a lot to explain. I mean, the Bible is just a huge book. You know, there's a lot in it. And, you know, I want to push people towards reading it and understanding it. You know, um, I believe that, that my poetry is edification for the world. And I really want to get that word out. So... Yeah, but yeah, God is spirit and he lives in us uh, and he will eventually change our bodies and we won't have these bodies, we'll have a spirit body and we'll be able to join him. Um, that's what I live for. That's um, really going to be a long discussion when we, if we enter into theology and discussion on God. <laughs> You're right about on. that, yeah. Go into it. Yeah, we could. <laughs> sure everybody would keep watching, but yeah, we could. Um, but I really, I really want um, these poems to, and, and for people to, you know, understand and uh, believe and not get marked of the beast. <laughs> we don't want you to get the mark of the beast. <laughs> let's let's not uh, go too deep into it. Now let's go to the next point that you have shared here with us. How our children are disrespectful to parents and are becoming out of control. Why do you think that? <laughs> I mean, is there anything that you... What? That can you believe that our children are going out of control and are disrespectful to parents? 
yeah, this generation has become, you know, they, uh, the kids nowadays, you know, they don't respect their parents. Um, and they're on the, their phones. It seems like parents give the children phones at earlier and earlier ages. You know, we have the cell phones now. And so the kids are just constantly staring at it. But with the internet, you know, you never know who's going to be bugging you, who's going to be, you know, listening to you. And, you know, people put their banking information on their phones, you know. Uh, but children nowadays, they are just, they're, they are not respectful to other people. Um, unless, of course, the parents really, really instill uh, good morals and 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 I hope Christianity as well um, and you know let the kids decide for themselves as they grow but teach them in the right way um, it seems to me that this generation is they are really not um, the parents are really leaving it up to televisions and this point about children that you're sharing with us right now there's one param seven joined in welcome params and one more line someone joined us very recently and i will I'm, I'm so uh, your, your, your well, belief uh, about children being disrespectful towards the parents and becoming out of control and your beliefs about uh, theology and Bible they, they are clearly expressed in your poems I believe and you aim to um, make people realize that this is happening so through that uh, what is it that you aim to achieve? Uh, is there anything that you wish to change or correct or make uh, put right? What is it that you, uh, what drives you to write the poem and what is the motive behind uh, your, uh, inten your writing the, these poems to, is what I want to know from you. I think that poetry, um, I particular like doing the stories of poetry, in poetry, that rhyme. And I think that God has given us some, um, you know, poems to be able to remember. But reading from the Bible myself, I have learned so much. And so that is the main book, is the Bible. That's the book I follow, and that's the book that I get my stories from, and where my poetry comes from. It all comes from from God, from His Word, and and that's uh, what I really, really want to get across to everyone. So He just uh, He gives me His poems, and and I write them down and I share them. So that's. The, that's not it. And I hope that, you know, it, it seems like a lot of people really, really get a lot um, in their heart when I recite poetry to them. I have, I have been once um, memorized. So when I'm talking to people, I will just, you know, ask them, hey, do you like poetry? and see if I can recite one to them and then hopefully lead them in the right direction. You know, God says it's a, a straight and narrow path uh, and many will be on the wide path. And I think that that's what times are coming to now is, uh, you know, people on that, on that, not just wide, but wild path. Uh, but, um, you know, disrespecting God and, uh, you know, other religions, you know, witchcraft. And, and you know, it clearly states that witchcraft is, 
a sin. So we don't we don't want to do that. I'm just trying to to teach what I've learned, and I do it through my poetry. And my dog just come and got on my lap. <laughs> She's about ready to go out. <laughs> Say hi, hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have more questions, or can we take questions from um, anyone that is joined with us? So. Uh... What else would you like to share with us, uh, Madam? It will be really nice to know anything else that you'd like to. Um, just um, read the Bible and learn everything you can um, about God, and and you know, once you know Him, you'll believe. You'll believe in Him. And that's what I really want. And like I said, the future is here, and this change is the only constant. So I'd just like to take your approval the whether I can use this uh, video on YouTube and other social media. YouTube. I'd like to repeat myself. I'd like I, to take I, your approval you whether we can showcase this on YouTube and other social media platforms. If you approve, we will use it. To that would be word. so awesome. Except I keep losing you, my computer or my Wi-Fi or something is going on. Where I can't hear you. I understand. So I understand. I'll wait for you. I have a prospective point well, here. I hope that everybody enjoyed the and learned from it. So, <laughs> and someone is saying uh, poetry can be a powerful medium to convey. Convey poignant and profound messages. Poignant and Poetry profound. Poetry can be a powerful medium to convey poignant and profound messages. messages. And amen. That's, that's, that's so true. Poet, so, so true. Matthew Cunningham. He's a wonderful human being from it? Canada. It's a pleasure to be acquainted to him. Okay, I can hear you again. I'm I can't hear you. I think we may have to end this. I'm so sorry. I, I'll wait for you, madam. It's all right. Sometimes it happens. We have Rishit Anand. I welcome you for to our event. This is the first event we've had of this book. That is, change is the only constant. Oh my God, we've lost you. We'll add her back. So this is the book. And uh, we have, I'll repeat myself, 51 poems in this book with poets from eight different countries. And we'll try to add her back if she's around. Just give me a minute. I'm really sorry for this. Sometimes this happens uh, when the network is a little poor and I brought up. She, the poet, is from Temple, Texas, USA. We have other poets who are published from Texas. The name of the book of a single poet we've recently published is Where Are All the Blue Jays Gone? And it's published by uh, with the name of the poet whose book is published is Jennifer Ayala. We had an event this month on the 6th of October with her. I think the poet is not going to join us. So with that, we'd like to thank everybody who joined us tonight. We'd like to thank the poet. I, she's having trouble joining in. She wants to say something more. 
let me try adding her she's an incredible human being just that sometimes people who are not techno savvy face this kind of an issue the book has been designed by Laura Antonioli from England the cover design is made by Connie Deris from Germany and the back cover content is written by myself to do read the back cover content if you have a copy with you the book can be purchased from our website that is poetschoice.in and uh, otherwise you can also leave your review on our website or on goodreads and if you have a copy we do recommend that you leave a review also on bookcrossing.com the bookcrossing.com helps us track where all the book has reached it's an incredible website Okay, I think the poet is having trouble joining us. So we'll end this event for today. Again, we thank everyone for joining us. We thank the poet for such a wonderful event. Namaste.